Lee Jane Wilson. My name is Oscar Samuel Jet Wilson. Bruce Lachlan Wilson. My name is Gillian Wilson. Well, my brother is actually a really nice brother, sometimes. <laughs> like all brothers, they are sometimes annoying. And, but we actually have a good relationship. Yeah, Emily's our little sports queen at the moment with all her races and winning things. And yeah, she's doing really well. married to Jill. We got married in 2001. She's the gift. Um, yeah, she's just the perfect person for me, I guess. My dad, I like playing with him and he takes care of us. So we didn't get to Kayama until about 9.30 or 10. So we came here to my parents' house and yeah, you know, just sort of had a cup of tea, said hi, and left the kids here while Jill and I went down to the campsite to uh, set up the tent. It was interesting because I think there were probably three occasions on the Saturday that I nearly pulled out camping, but because um, we'd already booked the camping spot, I felt obliged to go down there. So it was dark again, it just felt uneasy, uh, strange going in at that time of night to set up a tent. And I was sort of lying there um, and I could hear this conversation going on in the car park next to us. Um, there was, it sounded to me like there was a boy who was planning to drive and he, there was a girl and a boy who were evidently his friends and they were trying to persuade him not to because they obviously figured that he'd had too much to drink and it wasn't a good idea. I just remember the sound of um, squealing wheels just because the guy had basically put his foot to the floor and then I heard a bang as he went through the fence and then I felt an impact and then just felt a lot of tumbling. The next thing I knew, I was lying looking at the stars and there was lots of heads leaning over me. I looked forward and I saw Mum's legs and they were shaking like mad and I put my hand on them. It sort of dawned on me. I kind of figured out what must have happened. Um, it was a bit bizarre. I just knew I had to find everyone and at this stage I didn't know if anyone else was alive because there was no other sound. But I'd found the kids by the time Jill became conscious and because she was you know, calling out where are the kids and by this stage they're screaming. <laughs> I think once, I think while everyone was covered in some way they kept quiet but once and maybe they were even still asleep through the whole thing, I don't really know. And I remember getting taken into an, the ambulance. The paramedics took me in the ambulance to then a helicopter and I um, got flown um, to Sydney. I, I remember just talking incessantly in the helicopter. It might be something to do with the drugs they gave me to, you know, for the pain. Oscar, Emily and I went to Wollongong Hospital by ambulance and Emily got wheeled to me halfway through the night and, um, and they yeah, said that she had to be transferred to another hospital. Um, the reason being her oxygen levels kept dropping because she had bruised lungs and they weren't trained to handle that in Wollongong. So if she deteriorated, they wouldn't have had the facilities to uh, look after her. So they made that decision. So we are in three different hospitals, but the good thing was both of the kids had family with them because yeah, we were basically all gathering for the Saturday f to get together the next day on the Sunday for this barbecue. And I remember Rosa and Maya coming and we drew a picture. Emily drew a picture the second, well, I think, yeah, I think it was a week after the accident, which had a picture of us all lying down in the tent and these angels lying over the top of us.
it was a complete miracle that I, for one, with the extent of my injuries, you know, that I was alive, for one, and also that I wasn't um, paralysed. My back was broken. I had a uh, punctured lung. Um, all the ribs down my right side were, basically there were so many breaks that they couldn't, they didn't even bother trying to count. I was bleeding on the leg a lot. I had a fractured pelvis. My left um, ankle was fractured. There was a lot of tension, you know, tense points, but overall, you know, our whole experience of hospital was really good. So since then, you know, the the improvement in terms of getting over the pain and getting stronger has, you know, has been steadily getting that way. Part of, I guess, being a family unit that you just adapt and get on with things. Basically just knew that that's happened and now I'm back home and <laughs> I don't know. The man, he was, he drank lots of beer, so he was drunk. So he was driving and then he was, then he just ran over us. Yeah, well, I think the thing is that people, especially young people, sort of think it won't happen to them. They think they're sort of a bit infallible, you know, that it happens to other people. These stories are for other people. Well, I'm sure Alex thought that. Uh, I feel sorry for him. I understand that he um, didn't mean it and he must have felt really bad. He had his sleeping bag in the car, he wasn't intending to drive. He didn't mean to do it. If you intend to drink at all, even just a, a small amount, just don't take your car because then you remove that risk because that's the problem with alcohol. You actually, you know, think you, you're fine because you feel good. There was no way Alex intended on uh, running a family over. <laughs> you know, it's just um, he had lost control. Of